Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Azalea, and I'm a researcher, user researcher at Salesforce. If you've ever participated in any research activities or taken part in any research sessions, that may have been me on the other end of the line. And I'm Emily Witt. I'm also a user researcher at Salesforce. I'm also a former Salesforce nonprofit admin turned user researcher, so I'm really excited to talk to, talk to all of you. Um, and if you've ever done user research sessions with us, that may have been me on the other end of the line. OK, so, so we're researchers. And it's our job at Salesforce to turn user feedback into recommendations that will ultimately improve Salesforce products. And we also try to share back our learnings with awesome admins like you, to, or developers, um, architects, to help inform the work that you're doing to create the best possible user experience for your users. So today, we'll share a bit about our methods and how you can utilize the same methods to get to know your users. And we'll also share about what we've heard about one area of our product, Lightning Experience, and provide ideas about how you can create more usable apps in Lightning Experience that drive productivity and efficiency for your end users. OK. This is uh, just a reminder that anytime you're making purchasing decisions, make them based on what's available in the market. And I like to start off presentations like this with, with a quote. And this particular all-star admin said to me that we can dream up so much to do on the platform, but I need to find the golden egg that's going to bring value to my users. Otherwise, it's like when you have a baby. And people think it's ugly, but you think it's beautiful. <laughs> Uh, perhaps this resonates with some people. I know that it resonated with, with my experience as an admin, um, and I also have felt it as a researcher. Um, perhaps it, it resonates with product managers and developers. And what we want to talk about today is how to really focus your energy and where to focus your energy to drive user adoption and productivity. So the first step to make sure that you're building applications and experiences for your users that are right for them, that drive efficiency and productivity, is to understand your users. And how, what, do, what do you want to learn about your users? What are some questions that you need to make sure that you know and have a deep understanding of? Well, you need to have a deep understanding of how they work, how they use Salesforce, what devices they use, and when do they use those devices? What delights them and frustrates them about the ex using Salesforce? And when you collect all this information, it's kind of difficult to keep track of it. So internally, we use personas to keep track of it. And you might have heard of our personas before if you've ever attended Trailhead DX before or Dreamforce before. And you might even have used an application to figure out what your persona was. So, just a reminder, Persona is essentially a group of users that beha whose behaviors, attitudes, needs, and perspectives are similar. So you can group those types of users into one specific persona. So this is an example of a persona. This is our deal closer persona. It's essentially a person who goes out, sells things, and closes deals. Um, and we have over here a quick snapshot of their day what they do in Salesforce and what activities they do outside of Salesforce. And in addition to that, we have information about the behaviors they exhibit. By having this information, you can design it specifically for their needs. So we know through our research that there are a lot of people collaborating to build a Salesforce experience for the users. And we know that a lot of various roles, diverse roles, are working on the Salesforce instance. And sometimes, people in diverse roles have very different perspectives. And hence, they see very different parts of what the user needs or what, who the user is. So they see snapshots of different sections of Astro. And in reality, we want to make sure that they see the full Astro. We want to make sure that they understand, have a full understanding of who the user is and have a good shared experience of knowing who they're designing for. And personas help us do that. So there are many methods for developing personas. And some methods you might be familiar with, some methods you might not be that familiar with. So surveys and interviews might be something that you know already and do already. 
You can also use task analysis, which is essentially sitting down with your user and understanding how they go about conducting a specific task and understanding the challenges that they have. Or you can use observational interviews or ride-alongs. So Emily's going to tell you a little bit about observational interviews right now. Yeah, and before we move on from personas, just quickly a show of hands. How many of you have heard of personas before? OK. <laughs> and how many of you have personas that you're using in your org? All right, all right. There's a few, but it's, it's a little smaller number. Um, and we know that creating personas can feel daunting or beyond your resources. And while we believe that it's worth it because it gives you the confidence to know that you're building the right things for the right people at the right time, there are lots of other methods that you can use to learn about your users and their needs. Um, so we recommend doing observational interviews, as Azalea mentioned. Sometimes this is called contextual inquiry for any researchers out there or any avid Googlers out there. Um, which you can do as part of your persona work or separately. And when you do observational interviews, we, the number one thing that we recommend is go to your users in their natural habitat, in their normal environment, and observe them working there. So not in a conference room or in a lab. Um, and make sure that you're listening, you're watching, and you're asking follow-up questions. Um, they might say something like, I don't like navigating and lightning experience. And, so when they say that, ask them to show you what they mean. They may also use Post-its or paper. And if you see any of that sort of stuff lying around their desk, ask, the, ask them to tell you what they use it for. And make sure that you're taking copious amounts of notes. Um, I know I can't remember all the things that someone tells me in a session like this, so I try to write things down as verbatim as possible and save a lot of the analysis for later on. And finally, when you bring back these insights to your team, make sure that you're differentiating between user personas, if you can, or types of users um, whenever you can. And that's going to give a lot of clarity to the conversations that you're having about what you can build based on the insights that you got. So when you're conducting these observational interviews with your users, look for information regarding these questions. So the first one is understanding what information they need understanding what fields, what data they access often and they need in their day-to-day -day activities. The next thing is understanding what the user and her team uh, work on and what manual business processes they have. Because that's where you can step in as a Salesforce administrator builder. You can step in and add value by making sure that those business processes are automated in Salesforce. And the next thing, you need to understand what parts of the user's days, uh, in what parts of her day she feels inefficient or ineffective. Again, that is an opportunity for you to step in with Salesforce and say, I can make you feel efficient and effective by using these processes in Salesforce. So identifying these opportunities and adding value by getting that information is what you should be looking to do when you're doing observational interviews. So. You've collected great insights. You've learned about your users. Now what do you do with it? Well, you use that information to create applications. Now, what are applications in Salesforce? Applications are a collection of objects and tabs and page layouts that you have specifically for a certain type of user. So now you've talked, we've talked about having personas. We've talked about learning about what's important to them. Now you should use this information to create an application that meets that persona's needs. And as researchers, we have identified that three areas of app design that are extremely essential to a good experience are the home, navigation, and record pages experience. So if you tackle and create good experiences for these, in these three areas, your application will be very effective for your users. So focusing your energy in th these areas is what we're going to be talking about next. OK, and we're going to start with home page customization. So how many of you have logged into Salesforce and seen a home page like this? OK, a few. I just talked to someone earlier today who shared that this is what their users see when they log in. Um, so as you can see here, this this home page, it has a bunch of empty components. It's not really showing any information. Um, but we also know from our research that users often encounter components that are showing information, but it's not the right information for them. So it's not relevant to their work. Um, and so what we really want the home page to look like is 
something that has relevant information that starts up the, their users off on the right foot. And in order to get there, we, we need to ask a bunch of different questions. When we're doing our observational interviews, we want to learn the answers to what are the tasks that our user needs to do frequently. So what do we see our user doing through these observational interviews over and over again? What types of records does our user need to access super quickly? And what information helps her start the day off well? So how is she starting her day off now? What's missing from that process? And finally, as we're observing her workflow, are we noticing any features that would help her become more efficient if she were using them that she's not currently using? So we want the home page to look a little bit more like this. So we want to make sure that we're putting important information front and center. If we're, if we're talking to a deal closer, the sales persona that Azalea mentioned earlier, they may need to see opportunities front and center so they can work through those opportunities. Um, we also recommend, as a best practice, putting a recent records component up on your home page to make sure that users can come back to the home page as, as sort of a, a landing place to, to quickly access records that they've recently accessed. Um, and also, we recommend putting a rich text component on the home page so you can help guide users towards the types of features that they're not currently aware of or not using that might help make them feel a little bit more efficient, a little bit more effective in their day. OK, now the next area we said that was key to a good user experience is navigation. So let's talk about navigation customization. Now, through the research that we've done, we've seen that certain navigation models work for certain users, whereas other, the other models work for other users. So for example, when you're observing your user and you see that they are typing in, or they're trying to multitask between uh, two different record pages, the standard view is not going to meet your, your user's needs. However, if you see that your user is trying to focus on one specific record page and trying to focus and get that one record page updated, well, the console view is not going to meet their need. Um, the next thing that we've seen is that sometimes the tabs that they have up there, um, they're, not what the they're not the objects that the user is looking for. So for example, there might be a, a specific persona who's looking for cases. And we don't have cases up there. And that makes it difficult and less efficient for them. And another thing is that we've noticed is that sometimes the fields that are on the object homepage in the list view for the object are not relevant to that specific user persona. So as a result, they're hunting for that information. They're looking for those fields. And it's not evident and presented to them right as soon as they get into that object. So that makes uh, them not very productive and not efficient. So to make sure that you're designing your navigation according to your user's needs, when you're doing those observational interviews with your users, look for answers to these questions. The first one is, understand what tabs or ob objects your user is looking for con consistently. Next, see what fields are important to her. And lastly, see what she does when she interacts with a lot of different types of data. Does she look at one piece of data at a time, or does she look at multiple record pages at a time? This is all important information that we'll, you will use in order to create a navigation experience that fits your user's needs. So when you gather that information, you know what objects are relevant to that user. So you can collect all those objects and create an application for that specific user type. And you can make sure that those, uh, those specific um, objects are presented front and center, and they don't have to hunt for it. Next, when you know that your user is looking for a specific record page and wants to work only in a single record page at a time, you can, you can make sure that you're using a standard navigation for that user. However, if you do notice that your user is looking for multiple record pages at a time and sort of multitasking between them, then use the console navigation. And then last but not least, when you're doing your observational interviews, you've gotten information about what fields are important. Make sure that those fields are on the list view so when they enter the object homepage, they see that front and center, and they don't have to hunt for that information. OK, the third pillar of making a good app is record page customization. So as researchers, we have seen the challenges that users face when they work in record pages. Sometimes data that is important to them is hidden behind a tab. 
So for example, when a user first enters a record page, they might want to see all the information in the Details tab first. However, they present it with the Activities tab. So they have to tab over to the Details tab to get the information that they need. The next challenge that we see is that the information and fields are not reduced to what that user requires. So there's too much scrolling to get to the inf important information and fields that they require and to get to the related lists. And last but not least, they might not have the quick actions that they need in view. So they have to click the drop down arrow next to the actions that are on the screen in order to see the other actions that are available to them. So to make sure that you're creating a record page that meets your users' needs, when you're doing your observational interview, look for answers to these questions. What fields does your user interact with frequently? What fields are important to the user during each stage of the process? And what are the actions she needs to take on the record page? You can use that information to create a record page that meets your user's needs. So you can use, when you learn about the fields that are important to her, you can use the Highlights panel to highlight the important fields. You can add the related list quick links to your page so that the user doesn't have to scroll through to get to the related list. And they can quickly hover over a single related list quick link and get the information that they need. And that makes them much more efficient. Then you can make, if you've seen that your users keep going to the default tab and that those are the fields that are important to them, make sure that the default tab, uh, the, the details tab is the default tab. Do not make the chatter or activities tab the default tab if you've seen that the details tab is what they need. And last but not least, uh, sorry. And then you can also, when you learn about the actions that they usually take on the record page, you can make sure that those actions are visible increase the visible actions so that they don't have to hit the drop down arrow to find the actions that they need. And then when you learn about this, the in fields that are important to them in each stage, uh, you can set up a path for those uh, custom objects. And then you can highlight the fields in each of the stages so they're not hunting for the fields that are relevant to them in that particular stage. OK, so quick recap. We recommend getting to know your users through a variety of methods, including observational interviews, and then use those findings, as well as what we've learned, to design great apps for them. And finally, as Azalea mentioned, your work is not done after you've done this. And if you saw her talk earlier, she guaranteed you that it wouldn't be perfect after the first try. Um, so you always want to make sure that you're continuing to collect feedback from users and tailor and iterate as you go. We have a couple resources. You can check out our blog post, the top five lightning page customizations. You can talk to the UX folks over in Camp Design. Um, we always love talking to people about creating great user experiences. Uh, we recommend taking the user research basics trail on Trailhead. And we would love if you would sign up for our user research program. You can talk to folks like Azalea and me about the different features and products that we're working on. Um, it really is the best way to make sure that your voices are heard and that your feedback gets into the product and we continue improving it as we go. We'd also love if you'd help us sign up your users for that program as well. Um, Azalea and I will be over there, uh, my right, stage left, answering questions afterwards. And we just want to say thank you so much for, for coming and enjoy the rest of Trailhead DX. Thank you.